wild donkey. It also means swift. It means fast. But that's what pyra means, uh, a wild donkey. You, you, you see the other word. You, you, you just see that. But that's what pyram is. Some of you all have met pyram. Some of you were pyram. And, and notice now, he is the king of Jarmuth. Jarmuth means elevation, elevation, elevation. Now, what this really speaks of, this, this is a wild donkey now that comes to a place of elevation. This means a high-mindedness and pride. This means high-mindedness and pride. So in other words, you've got to conquer that nature in our minds that makes us want to rebel and do our own thing because we're acting like a wild donkey. See, if you don't deal effectively with your pyram, then you'll reach places that you won't be able to stay. Did you ever notice the word wild? The word wild is the root of wilderness. Wilderness, wild is the root of wilderness. Wild things belong in the wilderness and they are kept there. And as long as you're in the wilderness, you cannot reach your promised land. See, when you're wild, you belong in the wilderness. When you've been tamed, domesticated, refined, then God says, now you qualify for the promised land. And so the thing that makes most people go wild is the thought that they are missing out on some fun. So they want to go wild because they think that somebody's keeping them something, uh, keeping them away from something that's fun in their life. But what they fail to realize is that the torment of the temptation to sin is nothing to compare with the torment of the consequences of sin. Yes, it is torment to be tempted to sin, but it's worse torment to deal with the consequences of sin. When girls, after the fact, are standing there looking the next morning wondering, oh God, I wonder about pregnant. The torment of the consequences of sin. See, the night before, they were burning. Like, oh, he sure is fine. He can get anything he want from me, whatever he wanted. And then the next day, see, they were tormented with the temptation of the torment to sin the night before, but the morning after, they are dealing with the torment of the consequences of sin. I wonder, did he have anything? I wonder, did she have anything? And now they're dealing with the torment of the consequences of sin. And the thing about it is that whenever the devil tempts us to sin, he never shows us the consequences. If he ever tempts a person to use drugs, he never shows their teeth falling out. Never shows you, you know, getting all skinny, you know, on that crack diet. I mean, he just he, he doesn't show you the consequences of sin. He only shows you the person just having a good time, being all mellowed out, chill out. <laughs> he shows you the fun, but he doesn't show you the consequences. And so just remember the next time that the devil comes with temptation, ask him, what are the consequences of this? Take your pen out and start writing them down. The consequences of the torment of sin. The consequences. See, there's a torment that is built into that. But you know that there are too many people who have severely damaged their destiny by being a wild donkey. You know the word you ought to use. <laughs> Simply trying to get to an elevated place too rapidly. And they have oftentimes disqualified themselves from their destiny because of their wildness. And if you are elevated too quickly before the humility of character has been developed in you to sustain you in that place, uh, you'll be brought down very quickly. You see, a wild donkey does not think about the consequences of his actions, of her action. A wild donkey doesn't realize that the longest distance to a destination is a shortcut. So they think that if I can make 
a shortcut, take a shortcut this way, I can have the time. It doesn't quite work that way. I recently uh, read a sign at a restaurant. Here's what it said. Hire a teenager while they still know everything. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Hire a teenager while they still know everything. That's called being sophomoric. A sophomore is a wise fool. Literally, that's what the word means, sophomore, wise fools. It, it means that they know a little of something and a whole lot of nothing. So they're wise in some areas and they're, they're just a, and, a, and a fool in so many other areas. So it said hire a teenager while they still know everything. It's amazing. But you know, most of these wild donkeys, they live with regret and remorse. And you know why? It's because their unbridled actions have left them with criminal records, disease, unwanted pregnancies, delinquent bills, broken relationships, and the list goes on. But here I want you to notice uh, Webster's definition of wild, and then I want to show you a spiritual parallel to them. Number one, the first definition here of wild that he has is living in a state of nature and not ordinarily tame or domesticated. And so the spiritual parallel to that is that you are ruled by your carnal nature. You're ruled by your carnal nature. Here's the next one, number two, second definition of wow. Growing or produced without the aid and care of man. Just like wild honey. It, it's produced without the aid of man. It's, it's wild. Here's the spiritual parallel. Is a person who is unsubmitted or uncovered with no accountability. Wild, wild, an unsubmitted person, wild, won't listen to the mama, already been there, done that, have already made the mistakes, got the t-shirt, and there they are. The very thing that was your mistake is now talking to you, telling you that what you don't know. And they are the proof that you do know that you've been there and done that. Here's the third definition of wild. Not inhabited or cultivated. Not inhabited or cultivated. Something is out in the wild. It's not inhabited. It's not cultivated. Here's the spiritual parallel. Devoid of the Spirit or the Word of God. Devoid of the Spirit or the Word of God. You remember in the beginning, the earth was, with, it was void and it was without form. See, everything was wild at that time. Number four, fourth definition of wild means uncontrolled. There are some people that just absolutely refuse to be controlled. They are unbridled. They don't want to be under anybody's authority. They're uncontrolled. And so the spiritual parallel for that is undisciplined. 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 You have to be able to control yourself. It's called self-control or temperance. Temperance. He's trying to help a person to stop from doing things. You've got to have control with God to be ready to stop at a moment's notice because you're submitted to him. I mean, what do you think would have happened had Abraham not been submitted to God and he had drawn the, the dagger ready to kill his own son and in mid-stroke God says, Abraham, Abraham. But he knew that Abraham was so submitted to him that he would stop at a moment's notice. There are some times when you are in a battle, you don't have time to stop and explain to the folks that you're trying to help protect, listen baby, get your things, let's get out of here. And they don't even understand the danger that is imminent. Them, mama, why we got to go? What's the hurry? Well, yeah. They need to be able to trust them. You're in the military when you are under command. You don't have time to be saying, well, what, what, I mean, it's 3 30 in the morning. What your, what your, what's all the fuss about? What, what, I mean, why we got to go right now? There might be imminent danger that you don't know anything about and they don't have time to explain it to you. The place might be on fire. Another part of it might have been bombed. You don't know what's going on. You got to be able to trust that person under whom you are submitted, that they are looking out for your best interest and you've got to be able to move without questioning that authority. 
When you are in a crisis situation, you don't have time to have a discussion about it. it baby, you got to get out, and you got to get out now. And sometimes you don't have time to go through therapy and convince the person you just have to trust me on this one. Listen, the house is on fire. You are in a dangerous position right now, and you've got to get out. There are times that God will put an urgency down in your spirit that you cannot explain. It's like, baby, I can't explain it. But if you don't get out of this relationship right now, you're going to live with deep regret in your life. Something awful is about to happen. I've already sensed it in my spirit. God has given Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God will give you discernment about people that you love and that you care about and sometimes you'll just contact them and there is an urgency for you to give a certain message to them that you've got to do this and if you don't here are going to be the consequences there's an urgency but see wild folks will be undisciplined and they won't listen they won't listen it's hard to help wild folks number five wild emotionally overcome emotionally overcome. Here's the spiritual parallel. It's a person that's ruled by their emotions. It's a person that is ruled by their emotions. And see, the problem with that is that you cannot educate your emotions. It's impossible to educate emotions. Emotions just feel what they feel. I mean, uh, you can know in your mind uh, that I know that he's not good for me. I understand he just got out of jail and he's still on dope. But honey, the way that man touched me, honey, something went all over me. Listen, your flesh, see, your flesh doesn't know anything. It's not going to even deal with all of that. It's not going to deal with their circumstances, their background, and the demons that they're dealing with. All your flesh knows is that you have been touched, and that man, I just, I'm telling you, just the way, the way he just talk. And your flesh is not considering anything else. See, when you're totally ruled by your flesh, you're going to be fooled so many times and you are about to go on an emotional roller coaster because emotions are very fickle. They are constantly changing. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.